What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech here with part three of our video on the time-based features. You should have already watched part one and part two before getting to this. We're gonna show you the last couple things like a time-based fuel trim, a time-based ignition curve, and we're gonna show you how to use all that together with the plots we've already built on the first two. So let's get on the laptop and let's get at it. All right, guys, so this is the final part of our time-based features videos. We're going to show you the last few things you can add on here. Like, as you can see already, it can, this is our third video, it can get really complex setting a lot of these things up. But take your time, and I mean, you can have your car running super consistent. We're going to mainly show you timing retard stuff and fuel enrichment, time-based fuel enrichment stuff on here. This applies to any car, really. I'm going to use the big tire log because it's already got some stuff in it that we can look at. Come to FT manager side. We need to open the correct map here. I'm going to close our side tab. Drive shaft. We're not going to look at that right now. We're going to look at time based retard. This is the most basic form of traction control you can do. This is a pre plotted. It doesn't care if this thing's bogged down, if this thing's knocking the tire off like crazy. It doesn't know. This is a pre plotted number. It's going to run this based on time only. This is one of the few things allowed in a no traction control class, like an NHRA Pro Mod or something as just a basic pre-plotted timing retard. And with this, you can, you can see we have our time increments here, what it's gonna do with timing. If you guys have some elaborate curve you're trying to put in here, you can click and drag. Like this is, okay, it shows we're gonna take six, seven degrees out if you wanna put a belly in it or something right there, which isn't uncommon depending on tire behavior, what you're trying to get the car to do. I even see some guys will add timing early because you can get away with it earlier in the run versus later in the run. We're not so hard on the motor, but something, uh, something to keep in mind, this is a very manual tool, so I don't know, if you're running quarter mile or something like that, then you want to go and let's say we'll add a point. We'll say 10 seconds, nothing runs 10s anymore. Put zero for now. We're eight seconds out, so we could even put in here like minus five. So what that's gonna do is, if this was a longer quarter mile pass, after six seconds, this thing's gonna start taking a little timing away down to, it's gonna take five degrees out. Like if you've got a hard combo to run, which most anything we run nowadays is pretty hard to the eighth mile, so it's gonna be really hard to the quarter mile. This can be a way to help preserve that thing, help it make the run out back. Same thing with the time-based fuel enrichment. It's a very manual, it does not care what's going on with the O2s, what's going on with the engine RPM. This is pre-plotted at this time, do this with the fuel. So we're going to, we'll turn our retard line off, put it back to five seconds so we can see. This thing already had some numbers plotted in it. So real early in the run, we're taking some fuel away versus later in the run, we're gonna add some fuel out back and help this thing survive the run. And something to keep in mind, like O2 correction here. If you have room in your O2 correction to, I don't know, add or take away 10% of fuel, if you come out here and you tell it to add 4% of fuel, if the closed loop has room to take it back out, it's going to. So keep that in mind. They're going to fight each other if you have too big of limits in your closed loop correction. This thing's already taken out as much as it can, 5%. So 
So when I go and add 4% out back, it will put 4% in the motor because it can't take away any more fuel than what it had. Also, we do have the options here to plot out a time-based electronic throttle opening, or you can even look at your wastegate pressure curve right here. This is a Procharger Hemi car. It doesn't have either one of those. Let me go to some map options, turn that stuff on just so we can plot it on here. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're back on here. You can see before I wasn't even able to click enable on these boxes because I, this thing doesn't have boost control or uh, electronic throttle. I turned the options on for that stuff just so we can plot it out on here. The throttle opening thing is really cool if you have a drive-by wire car, especially if it's, uh, I don't know, like a, I see it a lot on like an all-motor Harley or even the turbo Harleys or any of the modern cars that have kind of a drive-by wire and you can manipulate power with that throttle body. You can give it a maximum opening on two-step, three-step. We covered that in the two-step video. But let's say you want to limit the throttle early in the run, you can come here and say, okay, right off the button, I only want 40% of throttle blade. And you can get more elaborate on this, like these one second intervals is kinda crazy. So we can say, okay, after 1.4, I definitely want it wide open. Right off the button, we can be 40% open. At 0.7, we can be 50% open. And then in a second and a half, it can be wide open. This could help a lot with something you're just trying to get to go to 60 foot. You take away a ton of that throttle opening and then out here, you can bring it back in. You can do whatever you want with this curve. You can even, if you're bracket racing and trying to slow it down, you could really shut that throttle down out back, almost like a throttle stop. I'm gonna turn that one off. Your boost control target can also be plotted here. You, you can set this up in wastegate boost control as well. It's just a time-based ramp. You don't get to see anything else with it. If you set it up here, you can kind of, helps you plan out things a little easier because you can have an idea of what else is gonna be going on at that part of the run. Like here's our drive shaft curve. Here is our engine curve. Time-based retard stuff. Like if you've got somewhere that you have to pull a bunch of timing to get this thing to go, it's probably not the best idea to jam a bunch of boost in it there also, because those two things are gonna work against each other. And something to keep in mind, especially the turbo applications, if you've got a lot of traction control going on, this thing's pulling a ton of timing out, it may make more boost than you were asking for anyways, because turbos naturally, when we take timing away, there's more going out of the exhaust, there's more drive to the turbo. This thing's gonna make more boost when we take timing away anyways. So maybe don't be so aggressive on the target, but these are, these are just tools. You guys use them how you want. I'm just trying to show you a basic way to use these things so you're not totally lost when you come here if you guys study up on this a little bit you'll be figured out enough stuff to be dangerous in a small amount of time all right guys so that's going to wrap it up we've showed you how to use any of that stuff on the time-based compensations it's probably a lot to take in go back play them slow study them figure out what you can use in your program if you've got any questions, leave a comment below. If there's something else you guys wanna see a Tech Tuesday video, leave us a comment below and we'll see you next Tuesday.